Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Brew with Mindy Caso. I'm Mindy Caso, and I'm so happy that you've chosen to tune in this morning. We are talking about such a trending item this morning. It has been the talk of the town, if I can say that, um, for few months already, especially lately because we had a very popular person that just came out with a Hulu special about it. And of course, I'm talking about weight loss drugs. And joining me on this segment of Morning Brew with Mindy Caso, we have got with us Dr. Tyler King. Dr. Tyler King is a board certified family medicine physician. Um, he's also one of our city council members here in Laredo. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the latter part of our segment this morning. But first, First, let me introduce you and welcome. Thank you so much yeah, thank Doc, you, Mindy. for coming on this morning. We appreciate you. having you with us. And yeah. one of the reasons why I wanted to have you talk to us about it is because you and I have had several conversations mm -hmm. about weight loss drugs. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to start off for our viewers or our listeners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about weight loss drugs and why this has just become such a hot topic. Yeah, so these obesity medications known as GLP-1s, uh, GLP-1 agonists, um, they got started, really the first one got FDA approved back in 2005, it doesn't really exist anymore, but GLP-1s have really been studied since the 1970s as far as the effect of GLP, and GLP, uh, it's really, it's a gut, they're gut hormones basically, uh, that also are hormones in the brain. Okay. So essentially, these GLP-1s are are affecting our, our gut and releasing these hormones that tell us that we're that we're full, mm -hmm. uh, that we don't need, and also sends those signals to the brain in the hypothalamus. So, uh, what it's essentially doing there's there's something known as the gut brain axis, uh, okay. gut brain connection, and essentially what these medicines are doing is it's helping your gut and your brain communicate better. And we all know we've been inundated with increased food sizes, uh, you know, portion sizes, and uh, processed foods, and all this. A, this addiction to to this uh, the big food essentially, and I feel that these medicines are are a way to kind of fight back uh, against that, uh, and so so we go back to 2005 first FDA approved, and then you get uh, to 2010 and Victoza it was the very first medication that was approved, and Victoza is actually a diabetes medication. So mm -hmm. I think the one thing to keep in mind with this is that these medicines started off as a as a as diabetes medications. Mm -hmm. um, it just turned out that they worked so well with weight losses along the way, and they saw that there were no significant hypoglycemic events, mm -hmm. that they should maybe study it for people with obesity mm -hmm. without diabetes. And um, in, the, in the early trials in the, in the 2010s clearly showed uh, significant uh, weight loss in people with obesity without diabetes when compared to placebo. Mm -hmm. uh, and in those studies that they did, they, they, they gave the injection um, and they also did lifestyle medicine uh, type things. They did behavioral changes and education, mm -hmm. but still the, the, the people with the medication did much better than the people without it and with the placebo. Wow. So, uh, and then over time, it's just advanced. And you know, uh, in the late, in, the, in 2019, there was uh, Ozempic that got approved. Uh, Ozempic is probably the one that made things boom you know kim kardashian in 2022 at the met gala she had to lose 16 pounds in a matter of a month or so to fit into marilyn monroe's dress and <laughs> and so that became uh this that really exploded the popularity yeah. right um, and then over time uh new medicines like mount jaro which adds an additional mechanism mount jaro terzepatide uh, adds uh, additional mechanism of action and that one's now on the market as uh zet bound so there's Basically, now there's FDA approvals for both semaglutide and terzepatide. Those are the okay. two most common, right? Okay. Um, and semaglutide is, o is Ozempic for diabetes, and it's Wigovi for obesity, okay. you know, with or without diabetes. And then terzepatide is uh, Mount Jaro for people with diabetes and uh, Zetbound for people without diabetes who just okay. have obesity. Mm -hmm. And we've had yeah. a lot of... Um, people ask, you know, how these medications work. And I know you just um, talked a little bit about the gut and the brain. So in layman's terms, mm -hmm. these medications are shutting off your wanting yes. or desire for food. So you're no yeah. longer, once you're on these medications, you're no longer grazing or opening up the refrigerator mm -hmm. and, and, and looking yeah. in there to see, okay, yeah. what can I munch on? Yes. Because that, 
that hormone or yes. is shut down from it's your lowering, brain? It's lowering the food noise in your brain. It's lowering mm -hmm. the volume. Similar to what we see in depression and anxiety medications like SSRIs, uh -huh. it's, it's lowering that noise in your brain. Um, if you have anxiety, for example, and you're just constantly thinking and worrying about every little thing, right. some of our, those medications, they're lowering the noise so that you, uh, after you start taking them you know, six weeks later, you realize, okay, I'm not constantly thinking and worrying about all this stuff. So this, these medications are doing something similar. And people that are thin and never had to deal with obesity or being overweight in their life, uh -huh. um, they may not fully understand the situation uh -huh. um, because uh, they may not always constantly be thinking about food and the next meal they're going to eat because their fo food noise might naturally be lower. They might naturally have higher GLP-1 uh, uh, protein or in their in their body mm -hmm. so uh, and that gets to the point of shifting the the idea of obesity as a disease so ever since 2013 the American uh, Medical Association uh, designated obesity as a chronic disease so we only have 11 years of, of considering obesity a disease okay. that's not enough time to change the stigma and and the way people look at obesity there's still people the majority of people perhaps in society see obesity more as a character flaw, mm -hmm. as a disease. And we're right. trying to shift that. We're trying right. to shift uh, the idea of obesity is a disease, just like alcoholism mm -hmm. is a disease, mm -hmm. just like depression, anxiety are diseases, but there's still stigma around depression and anxiety. We know there's some people that would say, just tough it out, you know, it's all in your head, you can right. get through it. Right. No, there's, it's, there, it's a disease. Um, right. And so we, it, the sooner we can shift the idea that obesity is a disease, and it's not necessarily just someone's character flaw or lifestyle decision. Because right. um, we all know people who eat whatever they want and they stay skinny. Right. Okay? And then we know people who do a pretty good job and, and, they, and, they, and they explode. They explode. And I, I do want to point out, treating obesity is not about cosmetics. Okay? Treating obesity is about the long-term effects, right. health impacts of obesity. Absolutely. Right? So we're trying to prevent diabetes. We're trying to prevent heart disease. We're trying to prevent kidney disease. And we're trying to prevent... Uh, major, like think about all the the weight you're having to carry around when your BMI is 40, 50, or 500 pounds. Uh, you're going to end up with osteoarthritis. You're not going to be able to walk. And like, your doctor tells you to get exercise. How can you exercise if your knees yeah. are, are touching, your bones you're, are touching you're out each of other? You can't. Or, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so treating obesity is treating all those downstream effects. So okay. um, that's the message I'm hoping we can get across. Yeah. yeah. We're going to take a quick break, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Tyler, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about um, why it is cost effective um, to treat obesity because of what's down the line. And then I'd like to get into a little bit of what you're trying to do on city council um, to counter effect that. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <music> Welcome back, everybody. You are watching Morning Brew with Mindy Caso, and this morning we are talking about the very trending subject of weight loss medications. And my guest this morning, talking all about that, is Dr. Tyler King. He is a local board certified family physician. He also serves on the Laredo City Council and a very big proponent of everything health. And yeah. you're a very big proponent of these weight loss medications. Tell us just real briefly, why is it that you believe in these medications as a family physician? Yeah, well, I've seen them work. I've seen them work in my patients. And you people from home probably have seen these dramatic TikToks out there from mm -hmm. people losing, you know, anywhere from one to 200 pounds. And, mm -hmm. you know, there, you can lose 20, 30 percent of your body weight over, over a year. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's life changing for the people that have struggled with obesity their whole life. So right. um, I've seen it work in patients. Uh, and, um, you know, the side effect profile is relatively mild. There's some patients who do experience, um, you know, GI, the GI side effects are the most common, you know, nausea, maybe some vomiting, mm -hmm. uh, diarrhea. You know, if you have a history of pancreatitis 
or uh, thyroid can medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia those are three things that we look at as a as a reason to not prescribe we mm -hmm. you you have these conversations with the patient um, you you know, obviously evaluate their their body mass index their BMI their overall history that they've had over time in the struggle with obesity all the other things they've tried and failed tried and failed right. and and then you get them on this medication and boom they're off Right. Finally, the noise, the food noise comes down. They're not thinking about food all the time. Right. They're able to go and do the other productive things in their life. And of course, I will say it's important that you still exercise and have a good diet. Okay, it's not, yeah. we're not replacing, we're not trying to replace diet and exercise. We just know it's actually easier to, to implement diet and exercise changes uh, with these medicines because you're naturally, it's going to change your behavior. You're going to eat less. Uh, and, you're, and you're probably going to eat better quality food because the unhealthy, greasy, fatty foods are going to not be appetizing to you anymore. You're going to look wow. at them and not want to even touch them. Wow. Uh, and, and not to mention, you might get some G extra GI side effects from it. So you're gonna, the medicine kind of punishes bad behavior, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and one thing I will say is everyone who's on one of these medications should be exercising, uh, especially from a muscle standpoint, weightlifting standpoint. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose your muscle mass. And... Uh, there are uh, some some studies that show that you know people that are on these medicines not exercising you might see a drop in uh, muscle mass that's why there's some local uh, clinics who will do like the in body and to kind of check your uh, you know body fat to muscle uh, your body fat percentage uh, and then kind of the before during and then throughout right. um, and so it's just important to first off have these conversations with your doctor mm -hmm. uh, you know this is not something I'm promoting. Uh, for for the sake uh, uh, of anyone in particular, I'm I'm, I'm just from the city council side. I, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to get these included in our in our budget. For and we're we're still pinning the final numbers about how it can affect us. And I don't want this to bankrupt the city. Okay, um, you know we, these are very expensive medications. I I wish that they could be cheaper, um, but they're life changing. Uh, they're you know in the short term they're cheaper than surgery. If someone's over and over time, of course it does get expensive. Um, but we have to think about how much money we're saving in the long term on diabetes, heart disease, osteoarthritis, all of the kidney disease, dialysis, all the things we're saving in the long term. Right. Do you think that that's one of the reasons why some uh, municipalities or, or companies are not covering it as part of their insurance because they see the upfront cost of yeah. providing the medication mm -hmm. and not seeing the long term yeah. cost mm -hmm. effectiveness? Yeah. It's a short it's a short-term, short-sighted way of looking at things, especially right. from the city. Um, actually, I just learned that the county is covering these obesity medications. So, mm -hmm. you know, from a competitive standpoint, if we want to recruit people to work for our city, if we have Webb County and then companies, and then we have TAMU, FedEx, UPS, right. Wells Fargo, all these other companies that are covering it, that's a competitive advantage when we're trying to get, um, you know, good people to work for us, yeah. um, knowing that that we value them. Right. Not to mention, people that work for the city and the county, how long do they typically want to work for the city or county? Yeah. They want to work for 20 years and get their pension, right? So the county clearly um, has that understood. They're, they're doing that. They're investing in their, in their people. Right. Uh, why should the city not do the same? Exactly. Um, and I want to, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for interrupting, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Tyler, but I, for our viewers who are not um, Laredoans or, or folks who live here in Webb County, um, just to mention that we are a population along the southern border of Texas, and we have a very high population, of course, of Hispanics. And as Hispanics, we love our food, and we have... Um, unfortunately, we don't have very healthy eating habits, mm -hmm. and because of that, we do have a very high prevalence of diabetes, high cholesterol here in Laredo, and therefore, we do have um, a lot of um, obesity issues mm -hmm. as well. So the, 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 the big issue now is can we solve these issues or help our population by having more and more companies here in town? approve these medications and that's yeah. kind of where we're going at right now because Dr. Tyler you serve on the City Council for mm -hmm. Laredo and you are trying to see how you can get the city to be able to afford the coverage of yeah. these medications. Yeah and that you know that is the beauty you know I get to see both sides of the situation of course when I'm on City Council I'm not a doctor I'm there to serve as council member mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a medical expert in those moments right 
Um, but I can bring the perspective, right? And, and that's, that's what I'm doing here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not Hispanic, but I do love the food as well. <laughs> so I do, I do, I do understand uh, that it is a struggle here uh, when you have uh, the two most obese countries in the world converging into one place. We have right. U.S. and Mexico are number one and number two. They, wow. they, they flip-flop uh, sometimes uh, internationally, but they're always number one or number two for most obese countries. Wow. And so here we are in La Frontera, on the, in the border of these two countries with the uh, best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds of, as far as from a diet standpoint. Right. Um, so we're in day with all the fast food and all the good home-cooked uh, Mexican food that's yeah, delicious, okay. right? Albacoa, menudo, uh, and the, you name it. And the carne asada, right? Uh -huh. now, and and, and I, I'm not here to attack carne asada, right? But uh, we know that, you know, having those, uh, you know, and I, I have patients who are like on the medication. They're like, ah, I'm not eating. I'm not eating like ten plates of fajita anymore. I'm only having right. one. I'm like, you know. So it's it's helping them control right. uh, that. Um, and like you said, turn off that food yeah. noise in your head. Exactly. Yeah. It's actually these medicines are also being studied. Uh, it, it, they're not approved yet, but they're also being studied uh, to uh, treat alcoholism. You know. So that's hope down the road it might be um, mm -hmm. something else. And in, in the in the medicine that has that GIP one, the Manjaro Zetbound. Uh, it actually is also being looked at as possibly helping a little bit with osteoporosis and, you know, reforming bone growth. There's all these things going on with it. But, yeah, mm -hmm. we're trying to lower the volume. You know, unfortunately, we have big food, just like we had big, big tobacco in the 1960s and 70s, pushing cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have big food that is, uh, you, know, s you know, obviously making us addicted to, to, to sugars and processed foods and all this other stuff and giving us these huge portions at restaurants. And um, so, you know, we actually, there was one article that came out that showed uh, a decrease in junk food purchases in, wow. in areas where, um, so who's, more, who's most concerned about uh, these medications? It's probably the big food companies that are worried that their, their junk food's not going to be purchased <laughs> as much anymore, okay? Right. Um, when you see things like that, you know something positive's going on. Of course, they're relatively new medications, um, so we do have to be looking at any long-term effects. We still don't know all the data about what this could mean. Mm -hmm. um, and the more people you have on it, the more stories you're going to see about side effects. And right. um, so if you, the, the more millions of people that come on it, yes, there's going to be side effects, just like every medication. So you're, you're weighing the cost benefits with your doctor. But from my standpoint as, as a city council member, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're trying to at least get a one-year pilot program where we allow our employees uh, to get access to these medications and see, uh, you know, the cost, because there is a short-term cost. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we're not going to see the savings for 10, 20 years down the road. Right. So there, part of it is trusting the data that we know diabetes, heart disease, all these, it's, they're so much more expensive. The, the surgeries, the procedures, uh, the, the medications there as well. Mm -hmm. um, not, you know, if we can prevent those things, we can save money in the long term. And our employees stay with us 20 to 30 years. I think they do. So, you know, it's in our best interest to invest in them. Not to mention, when people are obese, they're more likely to miss work they're twice as likely to claim short-term disability. Mm -hmm. When they are at work, there's something called presenteeism where they're less active at work, they're less productive at work. So they might be there, but they're not fully present. Right. Um, and so there's all these downstream effects, uh, both in the medical world, but also in the HR, like production world of your employees, um, you know, that, that, uh, that have an effect. And, right. you know, and there's, there, there's also issues with, there's also a lot of conversations with workplace environments. And, you know, we, we're all sitting way too much. We're mm -hmm. sitting on the computer. I know we're sitting right now, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, when, when I see my patients, they'll, they'll see that I'm, I have my little mobile desk and I walk in and I have the computer and I either stand and mm -hmm. maybe sit to stand. And, you know, we, we have to find we, the blue zones in the world where people are living over 100. One of the big things about them is they're moving all the time. They're active. They're active. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to find ways to change. This is a separate conversation, but to change the way our works. This is a national issue. Right. Change our workplace environment so that we're able to move more and not be stationary so much, because that's another issue, that our sedentary lifestyle. So right. I'm not here to say the medicines are the only thing. We also have to balance out better lifestyle as well. Sounds but good. these medications are, are life changing. We're going to take another quick yeah. break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up with Dr. King with some final thoughts and just talk just a little bit about that Hulu special with Oprah. Yeah. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Welcome back, everybody. Once again, I'm Mindy Caso. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Brew with Mindy Caso and my guest this morning, Dr. Tyler King. We've been talking about the weight loss drugs, of course, trending, um, very trending topic right now. I want to just um, talk just real briefly mm -hmm. about Oprah Winfrey. You know, mm -hmm. she has her special that's airing right now on Hulu. Both you and I have watched it right. a few times. <laughs> um, what's your take on what happened? I mean, obviously yeah. she came out of the closet and oh, admitted yeah. that she lost a lot of weight on yeah. these drugs. No, I, I love Oprah and like a lot of things in history, I think she's right on this one as well. Um, you know, she, she brought both sides to the table. She brought the two largest uh, uh, manufacturers of these two medications to the table for the first time ever. Uh, she could have been a little harder on them on the pricing because we I know agree. they're they're charging too much. Yes, uh, they I are. think, in my opinion, I, w um, I was hoping that she would know. have called them out on yeah. it and just asked the question why. Yeah, but. I, I, I of course respect the research they've done to get to this point, and there's people willing to pay uh, five hundred uh, to a thousand dollars a month to get access to these medications. Yeah. But but those who can't, those who can, most of us in Laredo cannot afford five hundred to a thousand a month right. uh, for for these obesity medications. So. You know, it's really, of course, New York, California, like that's small potatoes to them, you know, because right. they make their, their incomes are so much higher. So they're mm -hmm. charging the exact same, you know, of course, in those places. And right. so uh, it's just access and, and inequity and in access is a huge mm -hmm. problem. Uh, they touched on it in that. Yeah. I wish they would have mm -hmm. uh, pushed harder on that. Yeah. And, um, you know, because, and we need more competition. You know, it's just these two comp two companies that are really fighting it out. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's others in the pipeline, and even even Eli Lilly has an additional one. It's they call it the Triple G. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a third mechanism wow. uh, down the road that's going to have even better weight loss than you know. So Perfect. it's it's a revolution. Uh, I appreciate her shining the spotlight. Yeah. We're still ha so the cost is a problem, but also getting access to it, even from a even if your insurance does cover it, sometimes. The retail pharmacies are out. So right. what I do in my practice, I have to go with the specialty pharmacies in mm -hmm. other cities, like in, uh, for example, in San Antonio. There's, mm -hmm. there's a few that I can use, and they'll mail it to our patients here, and they do all the pre prior authorizations and the prep work. And, mm -hmm. and 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 if a if a patient can access it with their insurance, they will find a way to get them the medication. So that's that's an angle that we have to do sometimes. So I'm hoping. Um, you know, with the city, for example, we, we allow mail mail in pharmacies because um, if we limit it just the retail, our local retails are constantly out of stock. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, hopefully yeah. we can address it. But overall, Oprah uh, appreciate that she did it. I yeah. hope she has a part two, part three, because this is I just hope the so beginning. I too. Yeah. I really do like the mm -hmm. fact also that she took out um, the shaming of it. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, there's. There's just some people that just don't like to talk about that because mm -hmm. they feel like they're going to get criticized. Right. Um, and so I thought that that, you know, she, her, by her, you know, having the courage to come out right. and just say stop the shaming because, like you said, obesity, um, overweightness, you know, um, she's been treated throughout her life, you yeah. know, in a different way because of that. So right. it was good that she ended up doing that. Yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit about some of the companies here in Laredo mm -hmm. um, that do already cover it. You yeah. were mentioning the university, our Texas yeah. A&M International University, FedEx here in Laredo, the yeah. county covers it as well. Mm -hmm. And you're hoping that you'll see more folks um, yeah being covered. Yeah. It's not an insurance issue. For some, it could be an HR issue. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of times patients want to be upset with their insurance company, but it's not always their insurance company making the decision. Uh, it's a lot of times it's the HR, it's HR director. So uh, it's the, it's the HR department uh, and the employer making that decision. So that yeah, is. Tammy, you of course is part of the A&M system. So they have this big um, you know, set of patients that they can uh, loop into right. to maybe lower their costs. The federal employees also yes. have so it covered. Our border patrol agents and their families, all all federal Blue Cross is now covered wow. as of January of this year. Wow. Um, they're, they're showing that investment. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned, UPS, FedEx, Wells Fargo, TAMIU, um, and then Bl and federal Webb Blue County. Cross. And just learned Webb County as well. So, wow. What about uh, the school districts? We're, uh, no. Uh, from what I've seen so far, UISD and LISD are, are not covering it. The city, we're not covering it, um, and, um, and and I, I'm not sure about Laredo College. I, I, I imagine no. Um, so it looks like the counties, uh, you know, from the public entities, the counties yeah. uh, leading the way there. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think it's time the the city, uh, you know, step up and and do and do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, we can put limitations in there, you know, to make sure that um, to make sure that we don't let it bankrupt our city. 
Um, but we, we, I think we need to, um, you know, to step forward and, and make this a, a priority. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, health reasons down the line, you just can't put a price on that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to yeah. thank you so much, Dr. Tyler, yeah. for coming yeah. on. Thanks for having me. Um, first guest yes. of Morning Brew with Midnight. What an honor. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. And I appreciate all the yes. knowledge that you bring with you. Um, and thank you so much for everything you do for the city and for your patients, of course. Thank you. That does it for this segment of Morning Brew with Mindy Gasso. We hope you tune in for our next one. See you then.